Big Truck Superwash is a picture book about big vehicles with two things in common. They all get dirty, and they all need a bath. It's an enjoyable story that could be a great read before a child's bath time. Hi, I'm Dan Skinner, and welcome to the Kids Bookshelf. Ahead, we'll explore the book, and I'll talk with the author and illustrator about the inspirations behind it. I requested and was provided with a copy of the book, but this video is not sponsored. Stephen R. Swinburne has written more than 40 children's books about nature and wildlife. James Ray Sanchez has illustrated picture books, board games, and educational animations. They join us to talk about the picture book they created together, Big Truck Superwash. Stephen and James, welcome to the program. Thank you so much. Very nice being here. Well, Stephen, tell us about the inspiration for this book. Well, um, my daughter and son-in-law, uh, Haley and Willie, lived in Brooklyn years ago. And my wife and I would drive down from Vermont to visit them in Brooklyn. And as you do on a Sunday morning, you go out for the coffee and the bagels. You know what I'm talking about? You go for Brooklyn, you got to go get the coffee and the bagels. So Willie and I are walking back with our coffee and bagels, and we pass Brooklyn's famous car wash. And I'm, I'm from Vermont. We don't see a lot of Brooklyn's famous car wash. So I'm looking at this car wash, and it was just an absolute moment of serendipity that this thought came to me. Well, these cars are going in to get washed, but what about trucks? And I don't know. I really don't know where ideas come from. It's just remarkable to me, and it just came right so clear to me that trucks have to get washed. I said, trucks need washing. Willie, Willie, wait, trucks need washing. <laughs> and, and that was it. And I, I just, sometimes you have an idea and days later it's gone. But this idea kept with me. And I think you know you've got something when it clings to you like a limpet, you know? So I got back to Vermont and I think pretty soon, a day or two after I started writing down and, and it felt like big truck wash big sup, truck super wash kind of coalesced around this idea and that's how it came it was just a moment of it just came to me big truck super wash and it felt very right from the start it felt very musical and loud and that's kind of, kind of why I went with the rhyming words so right from the start I wanted lots of words Wham, clatter, clang, bang, boom, pop. Now, the title seems self-explanatory, but tell us more about the story that readers will find here. This is a story of um, a truck wash and uh, these trucks, varying trucks from excavators to farm tractors to 18 wheelers, 18 wheelers plastered with bugs, farm tractors splattered with manure that they've been spreading. Uh, dump trucks that have been working at a building site, excavators, all dirty. They are so dirty after doing their job that there's a need for them to get washed and cleaned up, ready for the next day. And I always I always kind of felt like the story was, uh, I have a bunch of grandkids, four grandkids, and they get dirty. That's what they love to do. Gus, my two-year-old, he's out there, he's in dirt. He loves getting in dirt and rocks. So Gus gets dirty, and at the end of the day, Gus needs to take a bath. He needs to wash. So just like trucks need a bath, kids need a bath at the end of the day. So I just felt like there was this kind of um, beautiful beginning, middle, and an end, that the trucks are dirty. They found this place to go get clean. Rod, uh, James's wonderful character that we introduced, uh, is managing this truck wash and they get all spiffy and clean. And at the end, what do they do? What do kids do? They fall asleep. Z as do the trucks and they're ready for tomorrow, the next day. So you've got this funny story and a little lesson in there to remind kids that they need to take a bath too. And, you know, because not every kid is enthusiastic about taking a bath, but it seems like this could be a great tool for parents and other caregivers to say, you know, those trucks got to have a bath, so you can do it too. Uh, can you read a portion of the book for us to give us a, a flavor of what people are going to find here? Sure, I would. Thank you. I'd love to. 
Wham, clatter, clang, bang, boom, pop. Trucks pull and plow until it's time to stop. When work is done across the town, hardworking trucks need to wind down. Before you stop, tuck your boom in tight, drop your blade plunk, and say good night. Let's wash away your dirt and muck. Everyone loves a clean, cool truck. At the Big Truck Superwash, cleaning is our game. Dirty buckets, blades, and booms. We're sure glad you came. Giant excavator, what happened to you? You're a mud cake rig, and we've seen a few. Well, deep in a hole on the building site, I'm hauling dirt with all my might. All of a sudden, the rain drums down. My bright orange paint turns to brown. Whoa, that's a stinky smell rolling down the road. Is that you, garbage truck, with your smelly load? Oh, not many trucks would do this job, splatted in slime and blobs of gob. I pick up what's thrown away. Hauling your trash makes my day. Here's a rig we don't see a lot. Big farm tractor. What's with the spots? Hey, when farmers want manure flung across the field spreading dung, it takes a rig with lots of power. Not afraid of a cow pie shower. Well, it sounds like a fun book, and I can see how kids would enjoy it. This is a picture book, so for what age would you recommend it? Um, well, the, the inside of the book talks about ages three to six, um, and I think you could go a little younger and I think probably a little older. And uh, adults might have fun with this book, too, because I think adults need a good, good super wash on occasion. Don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> I, I do. You mentioned that adults could have fun with this book, and because adults read picture books to children, do you keep that adult audience in mind as well when you're writing your books? It's a good question, Dan, and I do. I want this book to be entertaining for children, of course, um, but I also want the parents to enjoy the reading of it. That So right from the start, I wanted to have it have a kind of a musical cadence to it, the rhyming of it. I wanted parents to have fun with the language. I'm so into ly lyricism and language and words, the magic of words. So that's why actually in this book, there are over 30 sound words that parents and kids can look at, like wham, clatter, clang, zip, whirl. So all of those words add to the musicality the the sound of this place and it's a very it's a very loud place and i wanted them to have fun with the reading of it that's why this kind of lovely rod character and then the truck making uh, the answer to how it got so dirty so i love that kind of uh, conversation that the manager of the truck wash is having with the trucks themselves I have a question for both of you about the process of putting together a book like this, because, you know, the words tell part of the story, the illustrations tell part of the story, but it's putting the two together that tell the whole story. So what's that creative process like for the two of you? Well, I'll, I'll start off because I want to hear what James says, but I, I think picture books are a true collaboration. It's, a, it's teamwork. It's a partnership. Once I've got my words down, I hand it off to the editor and they find a, a wonderful illustrator like James. And I have to tell you, uh, kudos to James. I was blown away by what he did with this book because he took it to a whole nother level. I, in my book, did not plan on putting eyeballs on the trucks. There's no mention of eyeballs in this book. There's no mention of Rod, the, the manager. There's no mention of birds flying around, seagulls. James did all that. And I just love that he took it to a new level. And that's the beautiful part about picture book collaboration. It's 50% words and 50% art that makes a book so successful. James, how do you take inspiration from those words and turn them into illustrations? 
when uh, when I first get the uh, the manuscripts, it's pretty much just all Steve's words. I might get a couple of notes like, oh, we want this scene to maybe look like this or maybe look like that. But it's really just breaking down Steve's words and trying to make them look, trying to make the words come to life and make them fun. Um, in all my books, I try to make them super detailed. So they'll just be, kids will be glued to the pages and look at all the tiny little things and kids and parents alike could just go back and find new things each time they read it. Um, so yeah, it starts off just Steve's words. And then over the next month, I'll just do some roughs. Oh, this is a good idea. That's a good idea. Wait, wait, let's put this and let's do that. And then the Rod character, my dad's name is Rod. Um, without him, without my mom, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be in the position that I am making art my career so i just wanted to give back to my dad and just give him a big thanks um yeah that's my process on the whole thing so your dad is in the book and each of those vehicles have their own personality so tell us more about how you bring those machines to life yeah so big thing for me is color um like the the garbage truck green Super stinky, nasty, disgusting vehicle. You're picking up sludge. You're picking up uh, dirty McDonald's wrappers, anything that you have to pick up. So uh, just giving every character a personality is my goal, um, whether it's super small, super big. Uh, I went to school to become a character designer for studios like Disney and Nickelodeon and stuff. Just sort of fell into children's books. So every book that I do, I have to, it's ingrained in me. I have to give them a big personality, no matter what the character is. A question again for both of you. James, you said that you kind of fell into illustrating children's books. And Stephen, I'm also interested in hearing from you about what you enjoy about creating books for children. I mean, I'm this is a little bit of a departure for me, uh, as it said on the flap jacket copy, um, writing kind of a fictionalized story about trucks. I mean, if I can be so bold to hold up this book too, this is, uh, this is a book that came out about giraffes. And I've been, it's so funny because this is really the tale of two books. This book happened in the space of maybe two or three years. This book I've been working on for over 15 years. I wanted to do a story about giraffes. So some books, take a short amount of time. Other books will take a longer period. I, I've always been drawn to nature. I'm, I'm a park ranger. I'm a naturalist, a biologist by training. I went to school for that. I, for years, I, I worked in national parks uh, as a, a interpreting nature for people. So I'm drawn to that world. Uh, but having grandchildren, you start thinking about trucks and and dinosaurs uh so as i said before this just kind of came to me this big truck superwash but um i love to bring my passion to a story it's it's all about story for me kids love story they love a beginning a middle and an end and whether i'm writing about trucks or giraffes i want to engage the reader uh try to get the reader excited and passionate about what I'm talking about. And I do that through words, through lyricism, through the musicality of the words, and through the story unfolding from the beginning uh, to the to the end, whether it's about trucks getting washed and finally getting all nice and clean and going to bed, or giraffes, learning about giraffes, how long they are. Those things on their heads are called Aussie cones, things that children may not be aware of. Uh, just kind of turning them on to this amazing planet that we live on. And James, how about you? I think it's just, I really enjoy hiding stuff in there for parents. Um, I put a lot of references in the books. In this one, I really went wild. Uh, There's stuff from Fast and the Furious. There's stuff from the cartoons that I grew up with. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Rugrats, all this stuff. I think just hiding stuff in there for the parents to enjoy um, and then just creating vivid pictures for kids to enjoy because that's what I would have liked growing up. Uh, All 
all the books that I liked, they were very character heavy, vivid, beautiful colors. Um, I just want to give something to that effect whenever I create it. I, I, if I could, Dan, I love this last image of the book. And James, what was this? Was this a, a particular place that you went to? Is it a place out in California? Yeah, so um, I grew up traveling with my grandpa. Uh, I have three states left to go see and camp in. Um, every summer, we just hop in the back of his truck and we drive throughout the U.S. And this place in particular, Cabazon, we would always stop there. And uh, there were two dinosaur statues that you could go inside. And there's like a little gift shop and stuff. Uh, where we would always buy oversized t-shirts to sleep in and everything. But um, yeah, this is where my grandpa would take me and a very memorable spot for me. I actually hid his truck and trailer in the parking lot of that, uh, the dinosaur parking lot of that last spread. So, yeah, a lot of references to a lot of things. It's beautiful. It really is. The book is Big Truck Superwash, written by Stephen R. Swinburne and illustrated by James Ray Sanchez. Stephen and James, thank you for talking with me today. Thanks, Dan. Thanks for having us. Thank you very much. If you'd like to purchase Big Truck Superwash, I've placed a link for you in the description below. Well, thank you for watching this edition of the Kids Bookshelf. And if you'd like to see more videos about children's books and their authors, be sure to like, subscribe, and click on the bell to be notified about future programs. And if you're interested in books for young adult and older readers, be sure to check out my Some Books Considered channel. I'm Dan Skinner. Until next time, keep sharing the gift of reading.